Baruch Hashem Yah, Baruch Hashem Yehushua, Baruch Hashem Yehushua. Shalom, family. Today's lesson is titled Beyond Goliath. And we want to look at um, Goliath, okay, and what he represents. Because in our journey, we have obstacles, uh, seemingly impossible or insurmountable odds that uh, we face. Um, pressure, okay, that we deal with um mentally you know physically um and spiritually i mean you will be <laughs> bombarded with either accusations or threats that come directly from the enemy um and you will be bombarded with um discouraging words or bad examples things that don't really apply to you that uh, the enemy uses people to present to you, uh, to slow you down or to discourage you from continuing. Um, there are blessings that we have, but we have to defeat Goliath to get there. So what is beyond Goliath? What is on the other side of him and why is he there? So we're going to kind of approach it in that context. OK, so we're not really going to focus totally on the story of David and Goliath. I'm going to read from First Samuel um and get some of the context out of there but we want to look at the bigger picture here in our lives okay um because he is going to be there uh threatening us uh challenging us uh, because he does not want us to obtain what is behind him and what uh getting past him means for us so he wants to stop us from that accomplishment okay um i, I want to start with with john 10 10 a, a verse um and it reads the thief does not come except to steal and to slaughter and to destroy i have come that they might possess life and that they might possess it beyond measure okay so i want to focus on the steal part because um this is you look at the order of these um uh, different things that the thief attempts to do thief meaning the enemy meaning how satan meaning little debbie as i call him is coming to steal so what is he stealing i mean you don't even know all the blessings you have you don't even understand all of the things y'all has for you not all material we're talking about spiritual we're talking about mental um there's physical there's material there's all these different things that will manifest in your life but we have to understand the spiritual is most important because everything flows from there but he wants to steal so how does he do that he has to convince you okay or distract you or move you off your spot or put you in a position where you're not moving forward or where you're not even trying anymore or you're not believing anymore so that he can just simply stop you from getting what you were supposed to receive and in essence stealing it from you OK, um, we don't even know. I mean, when the heat is on and things are happening all around you, you have to realize you're a follower of Yah. That something is coming for you, that Yah has something for you. And he is playing the role of Goliath to scare and threaten and seem to be something that is impossible to defeat. So that he can steal. OK. A blessing that you don't even know is in store for you um, and if you look at the last part of this <laughs> that Yahushua says here uh, you might possess life and possess it beyond measure there's something of a possession that's beyond you measuring being able to measure and <laughs> the life is there to take it from you or to stop you from receiving it because you're so scared of him and looking at his size, his stature, his weapons, or whatever, you know, um, this is what Israel was doing. Instead of realizing there's a great victory if we just get this guy out of the way. Now, um, David realized that, and, and, and this is where we're going to kind of cover some of that because it's very important because there is an intent right now, I mean, in our lives individually and collectively to block, okay, um, the blessing Yah has for his people. So understand that regardless of how it looks and how you feel, 
You feel that way and it looks that way because Goliath is in, in the midst, yelling, screaming, stomping around, threatening to kill, threatening to stop you, threatening, letting you know that you're worthless, you're not going to make it, you're not going to do it, you can't do it, um, you're going to die, whatever. I mean, whatever he <laughs> is in his repertoire uh, to use, that he uses against all of us depending on the circumstances, right? <laughs> And it may seem so impossible and so scary if you just look upon it instead of realizing where your help comes from and whose fight this, this really is because there is something you have to receive that Yah wants you to possess. Okay. Now let's go to 1 Samuel 17. Uh, we'll read 42 through 47. Um, how, you know, Goliath is out there threatening Israel and Saying how he's gonna, you know, we're gonna, you're gonna be our slaves if we, if I defeat you, send us a champion. Basically, you know, he, he's not gonna beat me, but send somebody out so I don't slay him, and then you'll be our servants. But if you slay me, then we'll be yours. Da 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 da. Um, but this big, huge giant of a creature, of a monster, of a man. So um, this is how the devil wants to present things to us, where they look impossible to overcome okay and others looking at your situation will be telling you man this is hard i don't know about this i don't know if you can do this um sometimes it just ain't meant for you all those types of things to shut you down on your faith and move you off your mark um so you won't proceed forward to defeat him all right. Now, this is where David came and uh, he <laughs> talked to Saul, the king, and said, listen, why, what's going on out here? Uh, basically, it sent me out there. Since y'all don't want to fight him, since y'all think it's impossible, I'm going to go down here and take care of this business. Okay. So this is takes up where David uh, got his sling and he had his stones um, and he went out there. Okay. And like I said, I'm not going to read all of this. We kind of, we know what happened, but. I just want to read a particular part of this, all right? All right, so 1 Samuel 17, 42 through 47, verse 42. And when the Philistine looked around and saw the weed, he despised him, for he was a youth and ruddy and good-looking. Okay, so let's stop here, okay? So when you come to Goliath, or the enemy, with faith, he despises how you look. Because in the spiritual sense, you look so good, um, so youthful, so powerful, um, the best way we can describe it in, in human terms. He despises the fact that you look how you do, because you're going to be good looking in the spirit. It's kind of an analogy. Um, and of course, here is Goliath speaking his noise, his yin yang, whatever. Um, verse 43, am I a dog? You come to me with sticks. The Philistine cursed David by his mighty ones, his little, the little guys they served made by hand um and it feels like i said to david come to me i'll give you a flesh to the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the field and that's the same thing he says to us today keep trying this and you're gonna lose this 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 or you're gonna die or you're gonna it's not gonna work out for you um he will threaten you with every threat in the book and have you feel like he that he's right um but that's where your faith comes in that's where you really have to dig down and say I know we're going to get to it. This is, you know, David gave us a script, but he's like, listen, I, I'm going to give flesh to the birds. I'm going to do all this stuff to you. Um, kill you. You ain't going to make it. Um, and it's like, wow, why didn't he just keep his mouth shut and show with his actions? He had to do a whole lot of talking, didn't he? Because that's what the devil does. He can't show with actions because all he has is to have you be full of fear and, 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 and lack faith. So he has to talk and keep talking to explain to you what's going to happen to you if you continue uh, on this path of trusting Yah. Okay, so David said to the Philistines, verse 45, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of Yahuwah. Okay, so there we go. I'm doing all this in the name of Yahuwah. Uh, I'm going to get beyond you because there's a blessing for me on the other side. Now, like I said, it's, it's beyond measure. Okay, you might be praying for one thing, and that's great. But Yah will add so much more to that once you get past this obstacle and show Yah that you're serious about it. Um, I come in the name of Yahuwah of hosts, Elohim of the armies of Israel, whom you have reproached. Okay? This is what he's saying. 
This day, Yahuwah shall deliver you into my hand. See, these are these uh, affirmations. We talked about this before. This positive talking. I'm going to be victorious. I'm going to be fine. I am going to recover. I am going to obtain this. Um, I don't care what it looks like. And, you know, your circle of people may not believe a word you're saying. They might be praying for you because you, you seem delusional. You have to be that way. Would you think that the Israelites were, were, were believing that David was going to defeat him with, with a sling? Um, so this is very important. It doesn't matter what the people around you think. Okay. And advice they give. You have to be careful who you get counsel from. All right. So what do you say? You know, I'm going to smite you. I'm taking hair from you. You know, I'm the caucus of the camp of the Philistines, the birds of the heavens and the wild beasts of the earth going to enjoy that. So that all the earth know the Elohim is for Israel. And your people will know. And, you know, those who are watching your circumstances, even your children, all of them will know that Yah is for his people. So it's a whole lot of riding on your faith a lot of times because people are looking that you might not know are looking and they will remember that. And when it's time for them, they come of age or whatever, you know, they can have the same faith and count and go back to and think about what y'all did for you. And even though it looked like nothing was going to happen or that you were going to fail, of course, that's what Goliath is saying, right? In your mind uh, and things you see. People come out and make statements and he'll say, that's because this was going to happen to you. Um, you know, and people discourage you. So it, we all go through the same things. Okay. Um, and then he continues to say, and all the assembly know that Yahuwah does not say with sword and spirit for the battle belongs to Yahuwah. And he shall give you into our hand. So your victory is already uh, basically dealt, <laughs> handled. You know, I made another video about this. You know, these victories, they already exist. You just have to have the faith to obtain it. Now, once you pass through Goliath, question is, what blessings are, await you? Because it's more than what you pray for. Believe that. Uh, let's keep going. First uh, Timothy, First Timothy six twelve. <laughs> fight the good fight of belief, and lay hold on everlasting life, to which you were also called and have confessed. The good confession before many witnesses. Okay, the fight of beliefs. That shows you you have to fight to believe. You know, in and of itself, just believing is a fight. Especially when you have somebody sitting there yelling and screaming and how what's gonna happen to you and how you're gonna fail miserably. So the the, the <laughs> to have the faith or belief is a fight in and of itself, right? But it's a good fight. It's a good fight. It's a fight that Yah says is good, just like in days of creation he said it is good it is good for you to fight for faith it is good for you to uh, do everything you can to uh, maintain uh, increase uh, sustain your faith okay because by that you will lay hold of on everlasting life the kingdom um, and nothing will uh, push you off or pull you back off uh, the goal and the mark and a desire to please Yah. Okay. Uh, let's go to Hebrews 10.35. Do not then lose your boldness. Of course, David had boldness, right? And we saw what he spoke and you know, how he felt about things. Your boldness has great reward. See? So once you get beyond your life, so you're going to need boldness. Why? Because there's going to be something in your way. What What's the need of boldness if everything is clear? If you <laughs> nothing's in your way. Um, you just go straight to it. You see it the whole way. You almost don't even have to worry about praying. Here's that. Here's this. Oh, you know, it's just there for you with no pushback, no problem, no, you know, um, body trying to stop you. No feeling anything negative because, you know, the enemy is allowed to bring feelings upon you, pain, whatever. Oh, it's just, you know. Everything was clearer than what good would you be? What would this boldness be needed for? So you can see that you got to have boldness. Obviously, it's going to be a time for it. It's not just something we read and say, oh, yeah, boldness. You're going to have to display it and say, you know what? I don't care. I don't care at all. I'm just going to do this. It's going to happen for me because I believe it. 
It has great reward. Great, it says great. So what's beyond Goliath? I mean, I'm seeing some some great things here. Um, because Goliath is in our midst. I mean, he's, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. He's trying to stop you. Now, Ephesians 3.20. And to him who is able to do exceedingly above. <laughs> okay, so this is what you're going to receive. Okay. Him who is able to do exceedingly above what we ask or think, according to the power that is working in us. Exceedingly above, like I said, it's not just what you asking for. Thing more will be added, but you got to get past the monster. You got to get past Goliath. You got to get past, you know, this this odds that seem to be impossible or don't seem to be weighing in your favor. Okay. Uh, this is what how all this comes together for us okay because it's very important that we stick to what we started to do we put our hands on the plow we keep going um, regardless of the obstacles we have to keep moving um, this is how we receive what God has for us to receive it's how we get what we're supposed to get so Stay prayerful. I mean, stay in the word. Understand it's more than just reading. It's living what's in there. Um, and, you know, we're going to face these obstacles. Um, setbacks, what appear to be. <laughs> Seeing you're missing something or the timing was off. Well, it wasn't off. It just got modified because, yeah, I wanted it to be in a different way in a different circumstance. So understand that and, you know, maintain your faith. <laughs> stay in the word. <laughs> And hopefully it's an encouragement to you. Until next time, hallelujah. And may Yah have a blessing to his word.